to my video, my episode 1 of season 19 review of Deadliest Catch. The five boats that are going to be in this episode are the Northwestern, Time Bandit, Saga, Wizard, and the Barber J. And this episode shows a little highlight of what's to come in this episode. It happens later on in the episode, but the Northwestern gets line and a net stuck in their prop. They have to call the Time Bandit to come over and help them. So that's how they show what happens later on in this episode. Once the captains are in Dutch Harbor, it shows them in a meeting with the U.S. Coast Guard talking about the illegal fishing that's going on in the Bering Sea, and they basically tell them, if you see something, say something. Because from what they said is 20 to 30 percent of the fish that's on the market has been illegally caught, which is really crazy. So the captains will be defending their turf this season against illegal fishers, and maybe the Coast Guard will get involved with catching these illegal fishing boats in U.S. waters. Then after that, it goes to the Saga, and the Saga has a new crew member on their boat. It's Sophia Bob Nelson, and she is a captain in training. Her family owns a boat called the Victoria, which she runs now because her dad passed away when she was 13, and then like two years later, when she was 15, her mom passed away, and she's been running their family business since then. In the winter season, she's going to be fishing the cod grounds. So, Captain Jake is training her on how to do that, and her boat, called the Victory, is 74 feet long, and it's a wooden boat. They met her when they were tendering up in Alaska, and they became pretty good friends after that, and he offered her a job for her to train on the boat. So, they will be training her this fall season. That'll be interesting to see. Or the Northwestern and the Time Bandit will be fishing Golden King Crab. Jonathan last season ordered special bait for Golden King Crab. It's like a special cod or something like that, and he ordered 6,500 pounds of that. And he thought the cannery was going to be throwing in an extra 4,500 pounds. So if that was true, he was going to give Sig 5,000 pounds of the bait, Captain Jonathan was going to take 5,000 pounds of that bait, so they'd split it evenly, because they're both going to be fishing the Golden King Crab Grounds. Then it goes to the Wizard, and the Wizard is just out of town. They're coming up from Seattle. When Captain Keith sees something on his radar, a boat that is on the radar, but it's not on the AIS, no, no identification on the boat. So he calls out to the boat, and then he can see the boat too, because it's a little ways in front of him. And then, once he calls him over the radio, the boat goes dark, but he can still see him on radar, so he starts chasing him down, and after a little bit, he decides, I can't do this any longer, I gotta, we gotta run to town. And they were heading up a week early, so they could get all their Baraday pots ready to go. Then it goes to the Barber J. The Barber J is captained by Steve Harley-Davidson and a new captain, Captain Jack. He's been fishing in the Bering Sea for many, many years. His dad has captained on the Bering Sea for many years. His dad can't fish on the Bering Sea anymore because he had a stroke. So he's carrying on the family legacy and he brings like 60,000 pounds of quota for, I think it's Baird Eye or another crab species. So while they're at dock, Captain Jack, he has a flatbed truck and he's got giant boulders because his plan is to, for his gear, if there's trawlers in their area, he's going to drop them so, by his pot, so when the dragger comes through, that rock will rip the dragger's net and really screw him up, because sometimes the draggers don't follow the rules. You have to stay out of the crabber's grounds, and you have to stay out of the trawler's grounds. That's kind of a rule they have to follow. He has that ready to go. Then it goes back to the Northwestern and the Time Bandit. The Time Bandit had picked up the bait. The Northwestern went over to where the bait was supposed to be in. They found out that there was no bait, so they called Jonathan up on the radio, and he was like, they didn't have the amount of bait they said they were going to have, so we took all 6,500 pounds that we ordered last season. So Sig and Mandy are going to have to scrounge up whatever bait you can find in Dutch Harbor for Golden King Crab not that happy about that, and they kind of end up in a bit of an argument. Jonathan just ends the phone call, so Jonathan and Sig that are supposed to have a partnership, they have a little bit of bad blood here. 
Then it goes to the Summer Bay. The Summer Bay is in Dutch Harbor, and Captain Wild Bill has a n new captain to the Bering Sea coming on board because she's bringing quota. She's not new to the fishing industry, and she's actually been on a TV show on the Discovery Channel many years ago, and I actually watched it, but I can't remember the name of it. She was in The Perfect Storm, and she has been in the sword fishing game for many, many years. So she got some quota because some boats sank last year, and that's how she got her quota that will be added to Wild Bill's quota this season. She's going to be learning how to fish on the Bering Sea, and it'll be really interesting to see. And she flies into Dutch Harbor, and then she drives over to the Summer Bay and gets on it, and they're getting ready to head out to the fishing grounds. Then it shows the Northwestern, Time Bandit, Summer Bay, Wizard, Barbara J, all leaving Dutch Harbor to head out to the fishing grounds to start their seasons. Normally it would have showed all the boats going out together, but that time it didn't. Actually, when one of the boats was leaving harbor, I could actually see the Cornelia Marie, but they heard out the name and the logos, but I knew it was the Cornelia Marie. I will say it feels really weird this season not having the Cornelia Marie on Deadliest Catch because it's been around on the show for many, many years, and it just feels weird seeing it briefly on the show, but not being involved in it. Then it goes to the Time Bandit and the Northwestern. They're just getting out to the grounds, and it shows the Time Bandits on their gear, and the Northwestern is maybe a quarter of the mile or closer than that to the Time Bandit, and Sig and Mandy decide to start corking Jonathan and Andy on the Time Bandit. They start doing that. Jonathan turns the wheel, and then Sig turns, turns it to kind of follow him, and they just keep going. Then it goes to the Barber J, and Captain Jack is talking to his dad on the phone. His dad used to fish Baird Eye in the Green Slime area, and his dad always did good there, so he's going to start sending the pots there. So there, send the gear, and we'll see how it goes. Then it goes to the Wizard, and the Wizard starts sending their gear in their grounds. Then it goes to the Saga, and the Saga is send their gear and they're fishing for black cod. They have a million pound quota of black cod to catch this season because last season they did so well they got more quota and that's 4.5 million dollars worth of catch that they have. Jake is looking to add more boats to his fleet so he knows of a boat that's coming up for sale so he's gonna try and buy another boat soon here. Earlier on in the episode, while the Summer Bay, Linda Greenlaw was sending gear. She had a giant wave come over. She was trying to get the plotter working, but she was having a hard time, and a giant wave came over the port side and washed the greenhorn pretty good because 90,000 gallons of water rushed over. His inflatable life jacket inflated, so he had to run in and get a new one. But luckily, everyone was good. And... After that, Captain Wild Bill took control of the helm again. And then, um, going back to present time, Wild Bill is going through the gear, and I think the first pot was like 49, and it's really good fishing for bear dye. So, then he hands the wheelhouse over to Captain Linda Greenlaw, and she's struggling to get the pot in. It takes her three times to get it where it needs to be, and then she starts doing well after that. It's a big learning curve for her. Then it goes to the wizard, and the wizard starts going through their gear. They're getting, they're doing pretty good, and they come up to one of their pots, and they find an anchor had been attached to one of their gear, and there's a black buoy on it that had been painted black, a foam cork on it. So they bring it aboard, and then Captain Keith hands the wheelhouse over to Monty, to Captain while he goes down on deck to check out the thing and he decides to cut a hole in it and put a transponder on it so they can track it. They'll be able to catch the boat that's messing with their gear. So then they just continue to go through their gear after they reset it. Then it goes back to the Time Bandit and the Northwestern. Time Bandit starts going through their gear and their first pot has like the five and then their next pot goes up to ten and then it shows the Northwestern and they're really close to each other. They start, they're both doing really, really well. And then goes back to the Time Bandit 
they're going through their gear again and they notice that there's no crab in their pots and the pots are have been tied wrong and a way they have never tied their pots so a poacher has been going through their gear and hauling up their pots and stealing their crab from them they're talking back and forth over the radio and they are not all that happy about it they're talking with sig and they come up with a plan then it goes to the saga and they start going through their gear and they're doing extremely well with black cod jake had set them on some of the best fishing he's ever seen they're getting a hundred plus almost 200 black cod so then after he's hauled a couple pots in he hands it over to Sophia Bob Nelson and he's teaching her how to steer the boat while while they're hauling in long line pots and each pot's about 3,000 feet underwater so he's teaching her and she's actually catching on pretty good and learning and doing really well and they're just killing it this string so they're all really happy about that then it goes to the Northwestern and they are hauling in their gear and they're doing pretty well so they're happy about that then it goes to the barber j and they start going through their gear and the grounds that jack set them on are doing really well they're getting 30 40 plus bear die crab they see a boat coming in their area and they contact it and they find out it's a trawler and normally trawlers are supposed to give them space so jack decides to set his rocks in the strings so then when the trawler comes through there they basically set a trap for them that'll just destroy their nets so captain harley's like i'm gonna go down on deck and make sure everything goes well so luckily everything goes well and we'll see what happens then it goes back to the summer bay and they are hauling in their gear they're doing really really well and captain linda is still at the help they've switched off or something like that but they're pretty happy with that so they're still doing well then it goes back to the wizard the wizard they're hauling in their gear when all of a sudden they run into the same where they put the pot that they kind of set a trap in and all of that is tangled up so they have to deal with that they're they're doing pretty well then it goes to basically a salty take and sophia bob nelson is on deck with the crew and one of the crew member hands her a cod intestine to eat as kind of initiation and she does it and jake's like oh this makes me want to puke that was pretty interesting and kind of funny then it goes to the time bandit and the northwestern they had come up with a plan to secure their grounds since someone was going through their gear they decided to basically set their gear like 24 miles apart and then they'd basically do a grid like this because they could cover with both of their radar they could cover up to 32 miles so the time bandit can cover up to 16 miles the northwestern can cover 16 miles as well so they have a 32 mile grid where they can basically catch a poacher on their crab gear they reset their pots and stuff and they're going through this grid they see a boat on their radar and captain jonathan hails them over the radio they get a hold of the captain of that boat and they can only see it on radar because it it doesn't have its ais and they finally get him over the radio and the captain is definitely sounds russian and he's like we're broken down we're just fixing our boat which was a complete lie sig and jonathan decide to start pursuing the boat they are going full board to try and catch the boat that's illegally fishing then it goes to the saga and you can kind of hear what's going on and it shows basically the whole fleet with them hearing over the radio what's going on between the northwestern and the time bandit with the illegal boat in their waters so everyone's hearing the commotion and what's going on which is pretty crazy and they're all kind of talking about it then it goes to the northwestern and the time bandit again and they're still chasing down this illegal boat all of a sudden sig is the closest to the boat and he's speeding to catch up to him when all of a sudden the boat that they're chasing they drop a buoy line and a trawling net sig runs right over that he didn't see it in the water and 
it really screws up the propeller, gets caught in the propeller, and, and he can't go forward or backwards, and he tells Jonathan over the radio what's going on. Jonathan is still in pursuit while the Northwestern's dead in the water, and he basically has the Time Bandit red line, and he's going balls to the walls to catch this guy. And the Northwestern crew is working to get this out of their props and stuff. Then it goes to the saga and Jake starts reaching out to Sig to try and hear what's going on and he's like 500 miles away so it's really hard to communicate over the radio. And then it goes to the wizard and they are hearing this commotion and they're like this is crazy what's going on. And then it goes to the time bandit in the Northwestern. Sig calls Jonathan and Andy on the time bandit and is like we need you guys. So Andy and Jonathan, they stop pursuit and start heading to the Northwestern and Sig's like, do you got any empty 55 gallon drums and pallets? And Jonathan's like, yeah, we do. He's like, strap them together. They get all that put together and then they launch it into the water and then the Northwestern, their crew, they get their stuff, they get it all together and then they throw the net on there and Sig's like, pour as much gasoline on this as you possibly can. And then they launch it into the water and it's, a good ways in front of him and Jonathan pulls up and he fires a flare at the floating net and it just bursts into flames and it's a giant fire. Sig's like that'll teach him a bleeping lesson to not bleep and mess with us and the boat that was giving him crap they can probably see it 15 miles away or farther because this fire was giant so they're sending this guy a message don't mess with us so that is how this episode ends and it shows some crazy stuff that's going to happen this season. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens with these illegal boats fishing in their waters and stuff like that. I hope you guys enjoy this review of episode 1 of season 19 of Deadly is Catch. And stay tuned for more reviews of this upcoming season. Don't forget to hit the bell icon down below so you can be notified when I upload videos. Also, please share this video with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to smash the like button. Thank you guys for watching. And if you ain't dreaming, you ain't living. Don't forget to dream big.